Nike is defending its women's Olympic track and field uniforms. Images were released last week, and criticism pretty much started immediately. You take a look, see what you think. The After seeing that, are you surprised to find out that the design received backlash? A lot of it, for that matter. However, both fans and athletes have had varying opinions about the matter. Some criticize the design and Nike, of course, while others are pretty chill about it. As many of you are aware, ever since the Norwegian women's beach handball team turned the fact that they were required to wear tiny bikini bottoms for competition into a topic for debate, a quiet revolution has been brewing throughout women's sports. It's one that questions received conventions about what female athletes do or don't have to wear to perform at their very best. This issue encompassed a lot of events, including women's soccer, why white shorts, gymnastics, why not a unitard rather than a leotard, field hockey, why a low-cut tank top, and many more, including track and field. That said, it probably should not have come as a shock to Nike that when it offered a sneak peek of the Team USA track and field unitard during a Nike Air event in Paris, celebrating its Air technology a few days ago, they were met with some less than enthusiastic reactions. Mind you, the event also included looks for the other Olympic athletes, like Kenya's track and field team, France's basketball team, and Korea's breakdancing delegation. For the unveiling, the brand hosted a fashion presentation in Paris at the Palais Brognard, marking the final countdown to the biggest stage in sports, featuring top athletes such as Jordan Childs, Serena Williams, Shakari Richardson, and many more. Anyway, the reason why the Team USA's track and field unitard received flack was because the two uniforms Nike chose to single out on the mannequins included a men's compression tank top and mid-thigh length compression shorts and a woman's bodysuit, cut notably high on the hip. As it was displayed, the bodysuit seemed as if it would demand some complicated intimate grooming. The male version, by contrast, provides significantly more coverage. The women's bodysuit is cut notably high on the hip. The New York Times described it as like a sporty version of a 1980s workout leotard. Shakari Richardson, who had qualified for the 2020 Summer Olympics, modeled the unitard with a pair of compression shorts during the Nike Air Innovation Summit in Paris. Athletes will be able to opt for the compression shorts Richardson wore during the preview, or a tank top and bikini bottoms, which Olympian Anna Cockrell also modeled at the Paris event. Reportedly, there are even more looks, but they will not be revealed until the U.S. Olympic Committee Media Summit in New York. Anyhow, the bodysuit design has ignited a debate on social media about what some critics have described as sexism in the design of performance wear after the brand debuted the kits. Note that the 2024 kits will keep its red base color with blue and white stripes that were featured in the Tokyo Olympic kits. Blue was the base color for the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. The major difference on the front of the kits is the USA font, which will be thinner for Paris. Anyway, going back to the issue at hand, athletes said that the outfit would require a level of hypervigilance to make sure they didn't expose themselves, whereas they'd prefer to be focused on performance. Commenting on Sidious Mag's post, steeplechase competitor and Olympian Colleen Quigley wrote, I mean, I still want to make the team, but... She doesn't really need to finish that statement, does she? Similarly, Paralympian Famida Ayanbeku, also a track and field competitor, weighed in too and said, I'm someone's mom. I can't be exposing myself in such ways. Long jumper Tara Davis Woodall, who competed in the 2020 Olympics, commented under an Instagram post of the uniform, writing, Wait, my hoo ha is going to be out. Paralympian and track and field athlete Jaylene Roberts also wrote, this mannequin is standing still and everything's showing. Imagine mid-flight. U.S. hurdler and 2008 Olympian Queen Harrison Clay mocked the uniforms by tagging European Wax Center in the comments, asking, Would you like to sponsor Team USA for the upcoming Olympic Games? Coach and retired track star Lauren Fleshman, who won five NCAA championships and two pro national championships, called the revealing garb a costume born of patriarchal forces that are no longer welcome or needed to get eyes on women's sports. The author of Good for a Girl, A Woman Running in a Man's World tore into the design in a post on Instagram. 
Professional athletes should be able to compete without dedicating brain space to constant pube vigilance or the mental gymnastics of having every vulnerable piece of your body on display, she wrote. If this outfit was truly beneficial to physical performance, men would wear it, she added. The Women's Sports Foundation, an advocacy group for female athletes, writes in a position paper that athletes should be afforded maximum flexibility in the choice of uniform fabrics and styles. Appropriate uniform designs consider performance, medical and safety concerns, and diversity in body types and cultural norms. After a few days of discourse surrounding the cut of the track uniform bottoms, Nike clarified that the high-cut bodysuit is one of multiple options available, including compression shorts and full-length bodysuits. This specific style that was featured as part of the team uniform kits is a rather popular style worn by track and field athletes. I think it's really important that everybody understands that we offer a spectrum of styles for what athletes will feel most comfortable in from least coverage all the way to very full coverage and that everybody gets to choose what they want to wear. Jordan Ketcher, Nike's vice president for global sports apparel, told People, everyone has a choice. John Hoke, Nike's chief innovation officer, said that the women's bodysuit and the men's shorts and top are only two of the options Nike will have for its Olympic runners. He noted, there are nearly 50 unique pieces across men's and women's and a dozen competition styles fine-tuned for specific events. Davis Woodall, who initially commented on the uniform, spoke with people at the Team USA Summit in New York and shared a different sentiment, stating that it was a picture that didn't do it justice, sharing that she personally saw the uniforms. They're beautiful, not like the picture, she noted. The cut does look a little bit different on that mannequin, they just should have had a second look with someone to choose that photo to post. Other athletes like pole vaulter Katie Moon have stepped up to defend Nike, explaining that all Team USA athletes have multiple uniform options to choose from. I want to be clear and start by saying that what was shown on the mannequin was concerning and warranted the response it received. Moon, an Olympic gold medalist who is sponsored by Nike, wrote on Instagram, we have at least 20 different combinations of a uniform to compete in with all the tops and bottoms available to us. We do have the men's option available to us if we want it, she added. When you attack the buns and crop top saying something along the lines of it's sexist, which if that was our only choice it would be, you're ultimately attacking our decision as women to wear it. Gabby Thomas, one of the fastest women sprinters in the world, says she prefers to run in as little clothing as possible. But when she first saw a photo of one of Nike's new U.S. women's track and field uniforms for this summer's Paris Olympics, she was stunned. I was like, whoa! Thomas said at a media gathering for the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic athletes in advance of the Paris Games. But after studying the image for some time, Thomas relaxed. The initial shock was warranted, she said. But I think no one has anything to worry about. I think the mannequins were like kind of a funny image for them to put out there because it was definitely shocking for people to see. Um, but like I said, the athletes did have an input in how the uniforms were constructed and we tried them on before they were put out um, and everyone had a chance to kind of give their feedback. And then once you put it actually on your body, it presents differently. Well, that's that. Who do you think we will be seeing in Paris wearing that uniform? More than that, will we see this athlete in Paris? 